had said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, let's see how she, she changed it, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, you see? Yeah. Why she was wrong? Because in the midst of the garden there were two trees. And she was very tempted just thinking on the forbidden one. And the other thing that she added that is very clear, neither child it told you. Come on, we are curious. We are researchers. <laughs> they could have taken the fruit, they could have taken the leaves, do some research, dissect it, see it in the microscope. They could have done all of that. That was not forbidden. As long as they don't, took it to their mouth and eat it. So this is something that she is adding. That's why we need to be very precise with the Word of God and never say, only this, only that. No. The Word of God is alive and we are humble as students of the Word because we don't want to do what it says. Adding words to the Word of God, it changing things from the Word of God to make them totally inspecific. And this was her worst mistake. Let's be that. You see, with three words in English, she concentrated all this statement of God. Something that was absolute for God, she said, well, maybe. maybe. Yeah. God says, for in the day, the very same day, the very instant that you put your mouth on that tree, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And she just said, let's be that. So the adversary had uh, the last line that he needed. And see what is his first response. Hundred percent opposite to what God said. One hundred eighty degrees the opposite. God said, "Thou shalt surely die." The adversary said, "Ye shall not surely die." Right here. That's how the adversary acts. He starts distorting. He starts uh, making you to be not so interested in the precision, in the accuracy of the Bible. And when he got you, you have nothing for the word of God, but the word of the adversary. And he decided to believe more in the other side than in the world of God. This is the fault. This is the fault. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. You see? The second time Lucifer is playing with the last sentence of God. For in the day that thou eatest thereof. Right there, the other side. Ah. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. So, uh, first... The hearing is the one that was entering because she engaged in conversation because something that she heard. And he, here we just see the rest of the five senses taking a place and entering into the action. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, the eyes are here. And a tree to be desired to make one white, she took of the fruit, the, the toe is here, thereof, and did eat. The taste is here. And that's exactly what, what God was telling them not to do right there. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he, he did it. Okay, baby, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it is stop now. So, <laughs> so immediately, when they put their teeth on that fruit, <laughs> the spirit went out of them. And the eyes of them both were opened, with eyes wide open. <clears throat> And they knew, and let's see, the very first thing that they knew, that they were naked. And that's a literal, physical nakedness. So it seems that the lasciviousness was the very first thing that entered after they tasted from that fruit. And then as a human religion, they tried to do something in, with their own arms, with their own hands. And what they did was something very feeble and wimpy. That they showed fig leaves together. I mean, come on, how long can... Fig leaves last a couple of days, and then in a, in a, a couple of days they need to fill <laughs> some more. <laughs> and the, the, the Hebrew is even more striking because when he read, when we read here in, in English aprons, the Hebrew concentrates more only in this part. So they saw fig leaves together and made themselves. Uh, Whatever you call this first, long clothes? Long clothes. Long clothes, yeah. This is a very translation. Long clothes. And it's very interesting. I was talking with God, asking him what, what is uh, about this. And the only thing that I had, like in a flash, he said, the very first thing that they realized physically was the last time that spiritually you recovered. So I am still trying to think what is God telling us. But 
For God, it's very important even for this age of grace for us to realize that this is the very first thing that they did when they fell fall. It's all, it's physical as we see, but there is a, a spiritual aspect behind it. So the, very, the first physical thing that they covered is the last thing that spiritually we own as humanity and as a humanity of believers. What God means with that? Let's just keep praying and studying, but this is important. I, I think so. So they were naked, physically naked, and they sold fig leaves together and made their aprons. Then we skip to the moment when Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. So the second thing, the first thing is uh, lasciviousness. The second thing is fear. Mm -hmm. Fear. So all the evil entered when they ate that fruit. <coughs> when you think about it, they had all the good with God. <coughs> so in reality, what entered when they ate that fruit is evil. And evil for their own doom. Because now they, they were unable to continue cowering naked in the garden as they used to do it before. They were, they, they were with fear. No more that confidence without fear, but now they started having fears. Because I was naked, he's explaining what, what was his fears. His fear, he was naked and I hid myself. And God said, who told thee that I was naked? Have thou eaten of that tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And we know that that's what happened. But now we're going to see the solution of God, because it's very important. Uh, the temporary solution, physically speaking. He's, he said, okay, let's clothe you better. So unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins. This is very profound, very important. Mm -hmm. Because God was also the first hunter, and this was foreshadowing the necessary of bloodshed, the exact thing that Jesus Christ did for us. Right there was the first intuition. And we can see that Abel was able to perceive that point because his offerings were of lamb. So, but right here, and you can see the difference between who had the plan to produce these coats of skins. And of course, the owners, the previous owners of the skins are totally different. Maybe goats. But the point is that God hunted them and God clothed them, Adam and Eve. So God uh, told them how to be clothed. Now, he did this physically, and many years later, he did that spirit for us, clothing us. So that's very interesting. So, but because, because this is a biblical research, and we are open to ask questions that maybe rarely are asked, we are interested, we saw the spiritual aspect when they ate the fruit, but we are interested also in the body and in the soul. And this is something very important, that even with all the science that we have not, now makes sense, Man and woman, their souls and bodies, their natural natures, were affected by the fall as well. By ingesting the forbidden fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, whatever substance that fruit may have had, that substance incorporated irreversibly into the sperm of man. And that's very interesting. It was like ingrained. And this is something that is going to be mind-boggling when we do our studies of the conception of Jesus Christ. Because it's all about science and everything makes sense. Who owns the control of the sex in his hand to secure that the product is going to be a male? And 50% 50 because God needed to take part of humanity. Only the female reproductive ovule was not affected by the fall of man. And that's something mind-boggling. And we're going to see it in more detail when we study the conception of Jesus Christ. But right now it makes sense because that's the part that Mary provided. And that's what Jesus Christ took as part of, of humanity. But uh, the sperm, the one that moves, because the ovule is like the receptacle, but the one that really moves and needs to reach out is the sperm. The one that moves, thus providing the life soul of the body, which is in the blood, was the reproductive cell affected. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the, the bloodstream of both of them were uh, affected. The only little cell a group of cells that were not affected are the reproductive female cells. But the male ones were irreversibly, ir irreparable, unsolvably affected forever. So, and you can search on the internet the differences between sperm and ovule. <coughs> Somebody makes a long list, but we're going to focus only in this. That is very, very cool, very interesting. Ovules as a group are immortal, in quote marks because they are being transmitted in a continuous line from mother to daughter. 
So since the female is an embryo, she has already the full number of ovules that she's going to carry the whole life. Mm -hmm. They just need to mature when she is adolescent and she, she dro drops the proper enzymes and hormones. But this is uh, very incredible mm. as a group. Individually, the ovule won't last more than 24 hours, but I'm talking as a group. And that the full number of the ovules are since the woman is an embryo already there. And the man is completely different. <coughs> Sperms are mortal, and this continues in their production, which starts at the puberty of man. Oh. Which means that when a man is an embryo, when a man is a baby, zero sperms. When a woman is an embryo, when a woman is a baby, 100% of all the ovules that she's going to have her whole life. Wow. And the man have a limitless production of sperm, while the woman, since the very beginning, had the full number of them. So that's uh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. And that is important because that will make sense for us to understand in the conception of Jesus Christ why the ovule was not affected by the whole. Oh. This is important. So you can be it's good for talk for you to do your own research, your own studies. So what died immediately in Adam and Eve? Not their bodies, they continued moving around, not their souls, they continued breathing. So what died in them? The spirit. The spirit of God in them is what left. So, and at this point, I want to have a break. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe five or ten minutes. Anyway, continue waiting.